Hello friends, this is a this and that video, a TAT video. We haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought I'd do one today. It's um, kind of a rainy day here today in Cuenca, and I got several things that I want to talk to you about, so I'm going to start on that as soon as I come back from you know what. Hey! Hello there. Okay, let's get started. I want to talk to you about the incident that happened yesterday that I did the video about the, you know, was I about to get robbed? You know, I, uh, I, in the first place, I, I want to let everybody know I, I, I had absolutely no fear whatsoever. I didn't, God didn't scare me at all. And I think the reason why is because I kind of just didn't believe that there was anything to be afraid of. When I saw this kid standing there and, and I walked up and he said something to me about my camera, I just ignored him. And I thought, well, it's over with, it's no big deal. But then when I heard and felt him behind me, when I looked to my side and I could see him on my peripheral vision, I knew that there was gonna be more to it than just that. So I had a lot of people respond Lots and lots of people respond and tell me, I think I had almost 200 responses, maybe a little under 200 responses from people telling me that they kind of confirmed what I suspected that was happening. Uh, there was a lot of uh, mixed signals about what his intent was. And maybe that's all the more reason why I was, really wasn't scared. It's probably not a good thing. It's probably not, maybe I, everybody should have a little bit of fear because it definitely gives you motivation to be reactive and do something, do something different. Don't just, you know, stand there and let them victimize you. So I'm glad it's over with. I'm glad it turned out the way it did. I'm forever grateful to the guy that was blowing his horn. I have to say, for the first time since I've been in Ecuador, I was glad to hear somebody honking their damn horn. So it was potentially somebody saving my life. So anyway, that's that. I, I, thank you for your feedback on that. Thanks for all the advice. Lots of good advice. And a lot of it's just good common sense stuff. All this time I've been here, I've been walking up and down that bike path, and I've never felt any reason to be concerned about anybody that was down there except for maybe a couple of beggars. And, but yesterday it kind of surprised me. So anyway, that's what I've got to say about that. The other thing I want to talk about is transportation here in Cuenca. Buses, taxis, the Tranvia. I did a report, one of my videos, and I talked about how affordable it was to take a bus down to the historic district and in this particular case, I took a bus to go to Sunrise Cafe and I made the comment about it, it only cost me 15 cents to ride the bus down to go for a breakfast that cost me seven and a quarter. I actually paid more for breakfast at that particular morning than I normally do. But anyway, one of my friends wrote to me offline and questioned my logic about why I would you know, even talk about it. They didn't make any sense to him why I would spend such little money to go and spend so much money for breakfast. I wrote to him and said, you missed the point about this whole channel. And I, this is something that I want to talk about to you is that the whole purpose of this channel is it's not about me. It's not about how much things cost me. It's not about how much money I have or how much I spend. It's all about helping you. There are a lot of people that want to come to this country for retirement like I did that are on fixed incomes like I am that need to find affordable ways to, to get around and to, to, to even just to exist in this country. And so I thought it was a good idea to, to just show, you know, the Tranvia, the bus system, and then, of course, there's the taxis. I have to say this about the taxi system. I like the taxi system here better than I do in Monta. In Monta, they don't use the meters. You, you, you pay, 
what you can get away with. Here they use the meter system and there is a, it, they start the clock as soon as you get in the car and there's a minimum charge that you had to pay them. I think it's a dollar, somebody told me it's a dollar 39. Are you going to give them exactly a dollar 39? No, you're probably going to give them a dollar 50 and be done with it. They're not, they're not going to want to give you change. I feel like that by using the metering system, you actually get your money's worth and you don't have to tip and you're going to pay. You pay exactly what you, what pay for exactly what you get. And then on the, the bus system, for me, being over 65, I get a 50% discount on the fares. So a bus ride costs me 15 cents. The Tranvia ride cost me 17 cents. I, that's, I, I'm just telling you that so that people would know what it costs to get around here, okay? doesn't have anything to do whether it's logical for me to spend 15 cents and go somewhere and eat breakfast that costs seven and a quarter. Maybe my friend thought I should have gone into one of those sidewalk cafes and spent two dollars for a breakfast, which I've done. And which, by the way, I gotta say, are really worth the money too. They, I think they call them almorzo. Almorzo. I never. I can't pronounce it. I. I. I give that word and whatever means beauty mixed up. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm working on it. And, and and every time I say that word, I get corrected sternly by certain people in my life. That's the whole purpose of talking about what it costs to ride. Is so that you know, those of you that want to come here. And that's going to be on a fixed income, and you're going to be on your budget, which I hope you are. And I just want you to see how affordable it is to ride. The when you go, when you get here, I advise everybody to hire a driver to take you around and go get your bus pass and your Tranvia pass. There's two separate passes, and you'll want to go. Um, well. In my particular case, I used Victor Ojeda. I did a video about him, an interview. Super nice guy. The day, first day I was here, he took me to the airport where I got my Tranvia pass. It cost me, I think it cost me $1.75 for the card. I'll show it to you. The Tranvia pass. That's this guy right here. Mine is yellow because I'm over 65, so this shows that I'm a senior. I think I paid $1.75 for the card and I gave him five bucks and they put the balance on the card. And then when you go to a Tranvia station, there, there's a kiosk, a, a post there with a, a, a reader, and you just hold the card up to the reader and you hear it beep and they'll actually show you on the screen what your balance is. Now the thing, the thing for the bus, it's the card is a little bit different. It says Movilizate, Movilizate, M-O-V-I-L-I-Z-A-T-E, and it shows bicycle tag, looks like a taxi and a, a bus and a tranvia. So it's all part of the Atapa transportation system here, I believe. But I had to go to an Etapa office, and I'm, I'm sh showing you a picture of it here, um, right here. And I had to go in there, and because I'm over 65, I had to show them I had to give them a copy of my cedula. And the reason why is because they keep it for their records because I'm a senior, you know. But anyway, I had to pay $1.75 for the card. I gave them a $10 bill and we put the balance on the card. And when I get on a bus, there is a card reader on the bus that reads this card. And both of them have your pictures on the back, you know. And these are, these are valuable items to have. So. When you want to replenish the Tranvia card, you can do it at the Tranvia stops. There's a machine, and then in the lower right-hand corner of the display on the machine, there is a button that you can use to switch to English, and you can replenish your card with coin or with dollar bills or $5 bills or whatever. They don't do that for the bus pass. I was told that you have to go to the one of the Etapa offices, and you take your bus pass and you just, I guess in my case, I was put a $5 bill with it and hand it to them and grunt. Actually, I won't grunt. That's not very nice for me to say that. I'll, I'll figure out what to say in Spanish and I'll request a refill on it. Let's see. Since this is a this and that video, I'm just going to talk about random things. I got to say that after living in Monta for 
seven months and now visiting Coenca, I've, I've come to discover that both cities are two completely different cities and complete, two completely different environments. Manta, beautiful city by the sea, is a lot different than Coenca. I'm not going to stand here and say the bad things about Manta because there are some bad things about Manta that just happens to be that way because a lot of it has to do with the damage from the earthquake in 2016 and the fact that Manta is still a developing city. There's a lot of problems. There's a lot of little problems that need to be worked out, but there's none of them are so bad that you wouldn't want to live there. I, I, my whole stance on the purpose of living in Manta now is I say go to Manta if you want to explore the coastal region and figure out where you want to stay and retire. Manta has a lot of good places to stay. Airbnb is there. There's a couple of nice really hotels. There's some hostels. And if you want to stay there for you know, a short-term lease, you, know, you can talk to people like Stella Coulter and find you a short-term rental. And it's a great place to stay while you explore the coast. There's a lot of coastal villages and small towns that you can explore. Manta, I do have to say, is a little noisier than Cuenca. I don't, I've been in Cuenca now for two weeks and I haven't heard music playing anywhere yet. I haven't heard fireworks but one time since I've been here and I think that that was because there was a funeral going on across the river and I was told that they do that to scare off uh, spirits that don't need to be there. And I don't hear as many horns honking and alarms going off here. It's very, very, it's a very different place. It's very quiet here. The first night that I stayed here, I, I had a hard time going to sleep because it was so damn quiet. In Manta, in order for me to go to sleep, I had to have a fan blown in my bedroom to help mask out but some of the noise from outside. Plus you also have, if you're close to the beach, then of course you have the roar of the, the ocean, that kind of noise too. So none of this is said to be, to try to discourage anybody from going to Monta. Monta is a beautiful city, so I, I, I miss it. I'm, I've been here two weeks and I, I miss it already. I, there's a lot that I do miss about it. But Cuenca is, on the other hand, is a very sleepy, very, reminds me a lot of Colorado, little mountain towns in Colorado. There's beautiful scenery all around this place, or wherever you look. There's a lot of restaurants, lots of music venues here. There's a lot of expats here too, and there is a ton of shopping to be done here. When you get down to the historical district, oh my God, there's every little hole in the wall place that you see is a store of some type. And what's amazing, when you walk into some of these stores, you walk into a big open area that you just don't imagine is there. There's hotels, there's, there's restaurants. You walk in and you think you're going into a little tiny hole in the wall and then all of a sudden it just opens up into this big vast open area and with skylight and sunlight coming in and you just don't see it from the street. You have to go in. You got to get inside these, these buildings. I tell people that, that Coenca, especially down in the historical district, has a lot of good bones. It's just good bones. I tell people now that when you want to come and explore Ecuador, you definitely got to come and check out Coenco. It's definitely worth the trip. Let's see what else did I want to talk about. I don't think I have anything else. I think that's it. That's probably the shortest tat video I've had. This and that. So, from Coenca, Ecuador, thanks for watching. Ciao.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to the meeting. Um, this meeting is going to be about all the barking that has been going on um, today, even though there has been nothing to bark at. So.